Hey guys, Tech Rally here, and today I want to talk about some JavaScript fundamentals that you should be aware of, especially if you're coming from a Ruby development environment. I know a lot of coding boot camps at Flatiron School, App Academy, and whatnot. They introduce you how to code using Ruby. And to be honest, when I learned how to code, Ruby was my first language as well. And Ruby will always have a place in my heart whenever I need it. It's really intuitive, it's easy to learn, but there are a couple things here and there that Ruby does for you out of the box that a lot of other languages don't do. I noticed that when newer developers are transitioning from Ruby to JavaScript, they miss a few fundamentals, they miss a few key points that will really help them in the future. So this is going to be a tutorial based video. If you already are a Ruby expert or a JavaScript expert, maybe this isn't for you, but for all of you aspiring developers that are looking to get into web development, JavaScript fundamentals is a must know. So I highly recommend you to watch me code stuff in Ruby, followed by me coding it in JavaScript. Hopefully doing the side-by-side -side comparison and whatnot will really give you an awareness of what Ruby gives you out of the box. While JavaScript, there might be a little bit more explicitness or there are just a little things here and there with ES6 syntax that might be a little bit confusing, which I hope to clear up. With that being said, let's get to the code and see what those differences are. Pause. If you didn't know, I made a project-based React course where I teach you how a developer that's been in the industry for about five plus years approaches how to build a project using a library like React. This isn't your typical tutorials where it's picture perfect, it's fully modified. I actually run into a lot of errors, a lot of mistakes. If you are new to JavaScript, if you're new to React, this course isn't for you. This course is meant for people that have been using React for a little bit and are aware of some of the functionalities, but they just can't get over that hump of building their own applications and whatnot. I found a lot of motivation to build this project and build this course because this was something that was useful to me. In this course, we build a sports odds application app, and I really find this useful because I like to compare different odds between different sports books and it's really hard to find since i found a really cool api that was free i thought that this would be the perfect course for you if you are looking into building more react based projects and kind of seeing it from a perspective of a developer that has been in the industry for a while with that being said let's get back to the original content bye okay, the first thing i want to show you is the importance of whatever value is returned Instead of trying to explain it, let me show you an example of what I'm talking about and then we could go into a little bit more details. I'm gonna assume that you are pretty familiar with Ruby methods. So I'm gonna say def uh, return value or get value of a word. And then we're just gonna return the word. So if I say that return value equals get value of apple puts return value should return me apple sweet if i change it to dog it should return me dog sweet if i want to do something along the lines of say def multiply number by two and I take in an array of numbers. For example, I want to change um, two, four, six, eight to uh, four, eight, 12, 16. So what I would do here is that if I take an array, I would say array dot map, and I put these curly braces up. And here for each individual number, I'm going to do number times two. So if I say return value multiplied equals multiply number by two and I pass in two, four, six, eight. And I put the return value multiplied. Let's see what we get. We get four, eight, 12, 16. So if you are in the Ruby space, this should look pretty familiar to you. You're like, yeah, okay, Tech Rally. Um, I already know how to do this. Now, what's the big deal, right? You'll notice that in Ruby, there is no need to do an explicit return. Can you do an explicit return? Yes, you can, but it's not normally standard practice to do so. 
but you're not going to get penalized or whatnot. But if you transition into other languages like JavaScript, then you're going to need to be very explicit about the return. But there is an edge case to it if you're using parentheses versus curly braces. But I want to show you that in Ruby, if you already knew Ruby, you do not need to do an explicit return. So when I set this return value of multiplied, you'll notice that what is being returned is the array of numbers multiply, multiplied by two. So how do we do this in JavaScript? Let me show you how to do it. So in JavaScript, we're going to say function get value of the word. And here we're going to just return the word. And we're going to define a variable called return value equals get value of Apple. And we're going to console.log the return value. So if we run this, you'll notice that it returns Apple, which is exactly what we want. But imagine if I took this return off and just ran this, what gets returned is undefined. So you'll see that in JavaScript, if you don't have an explicit return, then you're going to run into something like this, where basically the return value is never defined because in this function, you never actually said, I'm going to return this. I'm going to return this. Like we could even call the word Apple, but I could just say return tech rally. And it'll just return tech rally. So what you return in a function is super important and you can't forget to return it. So let's keep moving on to that same example where I'm doing the multiply by number by two. So here, let's just move it back into return word. The second thing we're going to be doing is called function multiply number by two, and we'll take it in an array. And here we're going to say array dot map number. And here we're also going to have to return inside of the array, the number times two. And let's run this function. Multi const multiply number by two. Actually, no, that's wrong. Const return value multiplied equals multiply number by two. And it's two, four, six, eight. And then I'll do console.log return value multiplied. So what do you think is going to happen? Do you expect to see the numbers that say four, eight, 12, 16, or do you expect it to return undefined? I'll give you a second to think about it. Let's run the code and see what happens. What returns is undefined. And you're going to ask yourself, what happened? I returned a number times two here, but why am I not returning the actual return value multiplied? If you look at the example in the function of get value, you'll notice that we return the word. But in this function, we don't actually return anything. We return undefined. So to actually return a value, you need to actually put return right in front of here. And if you run your code, now we get the 4, 8, 12, 16. And here we can also do console.log return value multiplied of zero or sorry, zero. And if we run it, it's four. So are you noticing a trend, right? How important are returns in a function? It's super important, right? Even within the array.map function, you'll notice that we actually have a return value here. What if I don't return a value here and just run? Then I'm going to get undefined, undefined, undefined. If you are mapping over something and you need to return a value, you need to be explicit and say return num times two. There is an exception to this rule. And let me explain to you uh, what that difference is. So I'm going to comment all of this out. And I'll show you um, an example of what I just did, right? So let's just copy this function. Function multiply number by two. And let's copy this one here again. So nothing has changed, right? We're going to say console.log return value multiplied. Perfect. Now let's create a variation of this function multiply number by two modified. And here I'm going to return the array.map 
of the number. And here I'm just going to say number times two. And I'm going to say const return value multiplied and modified equals this function. And I'm going to pass in an array of two, four, six, eight. And I'm going to console.log this value. And let's run it. So I'm getting the same exact value, right? For the first variable and the second variable. But you'll notice that I created a function that looks very similar, but the second one doesn't have an explicit return. What did I do differently in the first function that I don't do in the second function? Or vice versa, right? If you're going to be using a curly brace for whenever you map over something and you're referencing to a new function, then you need to have an explicit return if you need to return it. If you're using parentheses, then you don't technically need an explicit return. The explicit return is implicit in the number times two. So why would you use one over the other? Generally, I like to use the curly braces as just a safeguard because what if there's something else I want to do here, right? Maybe I only want to return the numbers if they're even, right? So I could say if number equals even, I, I mean, I'm just giving you some pseudocode at this point, but you get my drift. If you need to do more logic inside of this function, then I highly recommend you to use the curly braces. But if you have a very simple thing to check out, then using these open parentheses is a very clean way to do it. The only thing that's kind of annoying about this is that what if you need to modify this function and add more functionality, then you're going to have to get rid of these curly braces and then try to figure out like which uh, parts are aligned together. And obviously for me, it's even confusing. So generally, I like to use the rule of thumb of curly braces if possible. But if you use curly braces, you need to return a value. If you need to just remember one thing from this video, it's that the return value is very important in JavaScript. Let's say it again. The return value is very important in JavaScript. So if you are transitioning from a language like Ruby, and let's just do a side by side comparison. Looking at the side by side comparison, you can tell that there are a lot more words on the right hand side. And maybe I'm just used to JavaScript now. and it just feels way more comfortable to see something on the right. But I do have to admit, Ruby has a lot of pretty features in terms of how you write code. But that's besides my actual point is that if you notice on the left hand side with Ruby, especially if you're coming from a Ruby environment, the return keyword is not necessarily needed. But on the JavaScript side and many other languages, return value is super important because generally in coding, you want to do something with your data and return that value. That's all coding really is in some way, shape or form. And being able to differentiate what languages require it and what languages don't is a really good exercise in my opinion. So hopefully with this example, you've understood the one of many differences between Ruby and JavaScript. For all of you that are getting into JavaScript, it's not scary. Trust me when I say this, it just takes a little bit of time to get used to it. The second thing I want to emphasize again is that the curly braces will require you to use the return keyword. But if you use the parentheses, then the return is somewhat implicit. That's kind of similar to Ruby. So just be aware, curly brace return parentheses, no return. And I, don't, I can't really make up a song or anything like that, but hopefully that could just get stuck in your head whenever you're co coding in JavaScript. That's it for me today. And if you like videos like this, I highly encourage you to hit that like and subscribe, share it with your friends that are also learning JavaScript. And I will make more videos like this if you find them useful. Either way, thank you for staying till the end. I'll see you in the next episode. Tech Rally out.